Hello and welcome back to class. This is Holistic Therapeutics HG400 for the College of Natural Health Sciences Bermuda. My name is Dr. Delcina Bean Burroughs and this is Lecture 5A where we will be discussing the Meridian System. The lecture objectives for 5A are that at the end of today's lecture, students will be familiar with the Meridian System, be familiar with the history behind the Meridian System, be familiar with the terms Qi, Yin, and Yang, and the Chinese philosophy of medicine that describes these terms, be able to name the major and minor meridians and the areas they govern, and be familiar with the symptoms associated with meridian imbalance. So what are the meridians? Well, the meridians are an energy force that can be felt but not seen. They can be described as channels of energy or pathways through which energy moves through the body. They have been described as containing a free flowing colorless non-cellular liquid that may be partly actuated by the heart. These meridians have been measured and mapped using modern technological methods electronically thematically, and radioactively. With practice, they can also be felt. There are specific acupuncture points along the meridians upon which the practices of acupuncture, acupressure, and reflexology are founded. In all these techniques, pressure is applied to specific points to clear blockages from the energy channels. And these points are electromagnetic in character and consist of small oval cells called Burnham corpuscles, which surround the capillaries in the skin, the blood vessels, and the organs throughout the body. There are some 500 points that are most frequently used by acupuncturists and therapists practicing acupressure and reflexology and each point is worked upon in a definite sequence depending on the action desired. Meridians are named by the life function with which they are associated. In most cases, this name is similar to the name of a body organ with which we are familiar, for example, the liver meridian and the stomach meridian. Chinese physicians can detect imbalances in meridians by feeling the pulses, but this is a sensitive touch and it may take anywhere from 10 to 20 years to really develop proficiency with this method of detecting imbalances. Meridians are classified yin or yang on the basis of the direction in which they flow on the surface of the body. Meridians interconnect deep within the torso, but we work with the part that is on the surface and is accessible to touch techniques. Yang energy flows from the sun and yang meridians run from the fingers to the face or from the face to the feet. Yin energy from the earth flows from the feet to the torso and from the torso along the inside of the arms to the fingertips. Since the meridian flow is actually one continuous unbroken flow, the energy flows in one definite direction and from one meridian to another in a well-determined order. Since there is no beginning or end to this flow, the order of the meridians can be represented as a wheel. A blockage in any of the meridians will have a knock-on effect on all the other meridians. When this energy flow is unrestricted, the body harmonizes the flow to optimize body functioning. Sometimes, however, the life we lead and the abuses we heap upon our bodies cause stress and sometimes the stress is so intense or so constant that in effect, it overloads the circuit and a blockage occurs. This has an effect on all the other meridians. There are 12 main meridians the lungs, the large intestine, the stomach, 
the spleen and pancreas, the heart, the small intestine, the bladder, the kidney, the pericardium, triple warmer, the gallbladder, and the liver. Now of these 12 meridians, they can be subdivided into six main meridians that actually penetrate the major body organs and six other meridians that are situated in the arms and do not actually penetrate specific organs. Closer study of the meridians reveals that the six main meridians are found in the feet, specifically the toes. Thus, massaging the feet is, in actual fact, stimulating and clearing congestion in the meridians. When congestion is cleared, energy is able to flow freely and the body is able to achieve a state of balance. With the six main meridians being represented in the feet, it is no wonder that reflexology treatments often report such dramatic positive results after treatment. And here we see illustrated the major and minor meridians the six main meridians are those that actually penetrate the body organs, and we're talking about the liver, the spleen and pancreas, the stomach, the gallbladder, the bladder itself, and the kidney. And then the other six meridians are situated in the arms, and they do not actually penetrate specific organs. We're talking about the lung, the large intestine, the pericardium circulation, the triple warmer and the endocrine, the small intestine and the heart. Let's take a look at the historical perspectives of meridians. Meridians have a long history. The Chinese discovered the meridian system approximately 3000 years ago and it has been going from strength to strength. It is a logical progression to incorporate meridians into the realm of holistic therapies and an understanding of meridians can help holistic therapists to understand the disease pathway more comprehensively. A basic knowledge of how they work can be of enormous benefit in pinpointing problems. Okay, so qui, chi, and ki. We talked about these words a little bit earlier, but here one finds continual references to the terms chi, also known as qi or qui, as it's sometimes pronounced. It is simply the Chinese word for breath, but it also imbibes life force or essential essence. The ancient Taoist master spent much time observing the flow of this qi or qi, which they recognized as the breath of the universe that moves through everything. Indian tradition, describes this energy as prana. Let's talk about the yin and the yang. The terms yin and yang are used to illustrate the alternating forms of the creative force as it is manifest in the world. Yin represents the physical, emotional, cerebral inertia and is symbolized by the square. Yang is the intelligence, energy, the spiritual, and is symbolized by the circle. They are two aspects of the same power, but in polarity as distinct from absolute duality. The Chinese maintain that qi circulates in the meridians 24 times a day and 24 times a night. In a sense, there is only one single meridian that goes around the body, the entire body. This is known as the wheel effect but many different meridians are described according to their positions and functions. There are 12 main meridians, which are bilateral, meaning paired, resulting in 24 separate pathways. Each meridian is connected and related to a specific organ from which it takes its name. It is also connected to a partner meridian and an organ with which it has a specific mutual relationship. Within our bodies, the yin organs are those that are hollow and involved in absorption and discharge, such as the stomach and the bladder, whereas the yang organs are the dense 
blood-filled organs, such as the heart, which regulate the body. There are constant interaction between yin and yang forces, and if the yin-yang balance between the organs is interrupted, the flow of qi throughout the body will be affected and the person will be unwell. Now let's look at the meridians in greater detail. Let's begin with the lung meridian. The partner meridian for the lung is the large intestine. The lung meridian, which is yin energy from the earth, starts at the clavicle, passes over the shoulder, and down the front of the arm, running along the biceps muscle, down the arm to the wrist, and ends at the back of the thumb. The lungs and large intestine control elimination, the former carbon dioxide, the latter solid feces, unabsorbed waste products from the foods we eat. Since these meridians are partnered, they can directly affect each other. For example, chest problems can be accompanied by constipation, and constipation can be accompanied by chest problems. The physical symptoms are asthma, coughs, various forms of chest congestion, respiratory problems, wrist disorders such as carpal tunnel syndrome, arthritis or stiffness in the thumb, and shoulder pain. The large intestine. The partner meridian for the large intestine is the lung. The large intestine meridian, which is yang energy from the sun, starts from the top of the index finger, passes up the inside of the arm to the edge of the shoulder before crossing to the back of the shoulder. It continues up the neck to the cheek, touches the upper lip, and ends at the side of the nostril. The large intestine forms the lower part of the digestive tract and is in charge of transporting, transforming, and eliminating surplus matter. If these wastes are not eliminated regularly, it can have a toxic effect on the entire system. The physical symptoms associated with the large intestine meridian imbalance are constipation, diarrhea, headache, shoulder pain, such as a frozen shoulder, nasal congestion, toothache, herpes and cold sores on the lips, nosebleeds, tennis elbow, and arthritis in the index fingers. The stomach meridian. The partner meridian for the stomach is the spleen and pancreas. The stomach meridian, yang energy from the sun, starts under the eye and curves up to the temple and then continues down the body and ends at the toes. Below the kneecap, the meridian divides into branches, one that ends at the second toe and one that ends at the third toe. The functions and activities of the stomach and spleen are closely related. The stomach controls digestion, it receives nourishment, chemically changes it and passes on the energy from food to be distributed around the body by way of the small intestine. The spleen transforms some of this energy from food into qi and blood. If the stomach does not hold and digest food, the spleen cannot transform it and transmit its essence. The stomach and spleen are interdependent meridians. Physical symptoms associated with the stomach meridian imbalance are breast tenderness, such as sore nipples, lumps, and inverted nipples, diaphragm disorders, hiatus hernia, liver or gallbladder disorders, distension of the upper abdomen, kidney or adrenal disorders and allergies, digestive problems such as constipation, diverticulitis and colic, appendix, which is on the right side, or ovarian problems, blocked fallopian tubes and infertility, thigh pain, knee pain, corns, and problems with the toes. The spleen and pancreas meridian. 
The partner meridian for the spleen and pancreas is the stomach. The spleen meridian, yin energy from the earth, starts at the inside of the big toe, runs along the inside of the foot up the leg before bending into the pelvis, then runs up the side of the abdomen, ending at the shoulder. The spleen is said to rule transformation and transportation. It is a crucial link in the process by which food is transformed into chi energy and blood. If this process of food transformation is not activated, nourishment and chi energy are not available for the muscles, so they become weak and the lips and mouth become pale and dry. If the spleen is imbalanced, the whole body or some part of it may develop deficient chi or deficient blood. The physical symptoms associated with imbalance in this area are problems with the up, outer breast and sore lumps, underarm complaints such as eczema, boils, and lymph swellings, abdominal pain, pelvic complaints, menstrual problems, groin pain, hernias, knee, thigh, and shin bone problems, fungus, stiffness or ingrown toenails, hypoglycemia or diabetes, and heavy aching body. The small intestine meridian. The partner meridian for the small intestine meridian is the heart. The small intestine meridian Yang energy from the sun starts on the outside of the top of the little finger and passes upwards along the posterior side of the forearm, circling behind the shoulder along the side of the neck to the cheek and outer corner of the eye before entering the ear. The small intestine meridian is in charge of assimilation as it continues the process of separation and absorption of food begun in the stomach. Because the meridian is in charge of this assimilation, it has considerable influence over body nourishment and body-mind vitality. The physical symptoms associated with small intestine meridian imbalance are air problems, tinnitus and deafness, neuralgia in the face, swollen lymph glands in the throat region, fibrositis in the shoulder blade, shoulder complaints, tennis elbow, arthritis and stiffness in the little finger, difficulty in turning the head to one side, and disorders related to the small intestine. The heart meridian. The partner meridian for the heart is the small intestine. The heart meridian, which is yin energy from the earth, starts in the armpit, runs down the inside of the arm, and ends at the back of the little finger toward the ring finger. The heart and small intestine meridians are coupled. This is explained by saying that the heart controls the blood and unites with the small intestine. If the heart becomes heated, the heat will converge in the small intestine, producing blood in the urine. If the heart is strong, the body will be healthy and the emotions orderly. If it is weak, all other meridians will be disturbed in consequence. The physical symptoms of heart meridian imbalance are inner arm pain and weakness, numbness and angina, weak wrist, stiffness or pain in the little finger, irritability, nervousness, cardiovascular disorders, and spontaneous sweating. The bladder meridian. The partner meridian for the bladder is the kidney. The bladder meridian, yang energy from the sun, begins at the inside corner of the eye, passes over the forehead and the top of the head, then continues down the back in four lines to either side of the spine. The four lines continue over the buttocks and down the legs where the two meet behind each knee. A single line then passes down each leg along the center line of the calf behind the outer ankle 
and ends at the outer tip of the little toe. The partnership of the kidney and bladder meridians is one of the most obvious and means that the bladder meridian has a role in stimulating and regulating the kidneys. The function of the bladder is to receive and excrete urine produced in the kidneys and the bladder is essential to life because if it is not functioning, the rest of the system becomes poisoned. The bladder meridian strongly affects the spinal cord and nerves and is the most effective in releasing tensions along its route. The physical symptoms associated with the bladder meridian imbalance are hair loss, neck tension, pain and stiffness in the spine, weak or lower back problems, bladder infections, incontinence, hip or sacrum problems, rounded shoulders, aching feet after standing, hemorrhoids, sciatica and varicose veins, and cramps in the calves. The kidney meridian. The partner meridian for the kidney is the bladder. The kidney meridian, yin energy from the earth, starts on the sole of the foot and ascends up the back of the leg. It emerges around the front of the lower thigh and ascends straight up the body to the sternum. The kidneys have a special relationship with the other organs because the yin and yang of each organ ultimately depends on the yin and yang of the kidneys. The kidneys regulate the amount of water in the body. As fluid is essential to life, the flow of fluid enables waste materials to be collected and excreted in the form of urine. Enormous amount, amounts of blood flow through the kidneys to be purified. If the blood does not flow as it should, symptoms such as high blood pressure or hypertension may result and there may be a buildup of toxic substances that the body is unable to deal with. The physical symptoms associated with kidney meridian imbalance are foot problems, long congestion, breast lumps on the inner side of the nipple, heart problems, reproductive problems, urinary incontinence, hair loss, darkness under the eyes, swollen inner ankles, and phlebitis on the inner calves. The pericardium circulation meridian. The partner meridian for the pericardium and circulation meridian is the triple warmer. The circulation meridian, yin energy from the earth, starts internally at the surface of the heart and emerges just outside each nipple. It follows around the axilla and travels down the inside of the arm to the wrist ending at the thumb side corner of the middle finger. The circulation meridian is known as a protective meridian as one of its main functions is to protect the heart physically as well as energetically. The pericardium is a fibrous sac enclosing a slippery lubricated membrane that prevents friction as the heart beats. Stresses and shocks first affect the pericardium and do not penetrate the heart unless the pericardium is weakened. The physical symptoms associated with pericardium circulation meridian imbalance are swollen, painful armpits, stiff elbows such as tennis elbow, eczema or skin problems in the elbow crease, hot palms, a red face, tension in the upper chest, painful stiff head and neck, arthritis to the middle finger, and carpal tunnel syndrome. The triple warmer meridian. The partner meridian for the triple warmer meridian is circulation. The triple warmer meridian, yang energy from the sun, starts on the back of the ring finger ascends up the arm and ends at the top of the outer corner of the eye. The triple warmer meridian is the partner of the circulation meridian. 
Although there is no anatomical organ that correlates with the triple warmer, the Chinese believe that all the organs in the body are guarded by it and that heat in the body is controlled by this function. The three heaters or burners correspond to divisions of the torso, the upper burner to the thoracic cavity and the middle burner to the abdominal cavity, the lower burner to the pelvic cavity. Their functions include control of the pituitary gland, regulation of body temperature, appetite and thirst, regulation of the autonomic nervous system, and control of emotions and moods. Because of these functions, these meridians is also known, this meridian, I should say, is also known as the endocrine meridian. The physical symptoms associated with the triple warmer meridian imbalance are shoulder pains, pain behind and in the outer corner of the eye, ear problems, eczema, deafness, pain behind the ear, elbow problems, slow metabolism, which leads to being overweight, a fast metabolism, which leads to one being hyperactive, and stiffness of pain along the arm and the wrist. The gallbladder meridian. The partner meridian for the gallbladder is the liver meridian. The gallbladder meridian, yin energy from the earth, starts at the outer corner of the eye, crosses the temple and descends to the shoulder. It continues laterally down the body in a zigzag pattern down the sides of the body, along the outside of each leg, over the front of the ankles, and ends on the back of the fourth toe. The gallbladder meridian is also one of the longest meridians and one of the most traveled, traversing almost the entire body except for the arms. Traditional Chinese medicine says that the gallbladder rules decision-making, thus anger and rash decisions may be due to an excess of gallbladder qi energy, while indecision may be a sign of gallbladder disharmony and weakness. The physical symptoms associated with the gallbladder meridian imbalance are headaches of all types, eye and ear pain, joint stiffness and pain, neck tension, shoulder pains, gallstones, arthritic pain in the hip, and a yellow color in the eyes. The liver meridian. The partner meridian for the liver is the gallbladder meridian. The liver meridian, yin energy from the earth, starts at the back of the big toe and ascends immediately up the leg. It runs past the inside of the knee and along the inner thigh to the genital region and continues upward to just below the nipple on the lower part of the sternum. The liver is the primary center of metabolism. Not only does it secrete bile, synthesize proteins, neutralize toxins and regulate blood sugar levels, it is also a store for fat soluble vitamins and glycogen, which it changes back to glucose when needed. Since the brain does not store any glucose, the liver's steady supply is crucial to life, and this is why the Chinese believe the liver was vital to conscious and unconscious thought processes. The liver meridian helps control the functions of the nervous system and is important for psychological problems such as depression and anger. The physical symptoms which are indicative of liver meridian imbalance are liver problems on the right side, the stomach spleen problems on the left side, genital problems, herpes, low sperm count, impotence, low sexual libido, and candida, problems with the big toe, gout, ingrowing toenails, fungus and corns, knee and thigh pains, muscle spasms, seizures, convulsions, and digestive problems. Now let's discuss the central and governing meridians. In addition to the 12 main meridians, 
There are two additional ones, often referred to as storage meridians. These storage meridians, called the central and governing meridians, run directly up the back and front of the body to the upper and lower lip. They help to create balance among the other 12 meridians by dispersing excess Qi energy to deficient meridians. The central meridian. The central meridian starts in the pelvic cavity, drops down and emerges in the perineum just between the anus and the genitals. It then crosses through the genital area to the top of the pubic bone, runs up the midline of the abdomen, chest, and neck, and ends just below the lower lip. In traditional Chinese medicine, TCM, the central meridian is seen as the regulator of the peripheral nervous system and, along with the governing meridian, it controls the other 12 meridians. It creates balance by uniting the organ meridians, allowing energy to flow adjust, to adjust when there is a blockage. In addition to providing energy to all of the peripheral nerves, the central vessel also governs menstruation and the development of the fetus in women. The physical symptoms associated with central meridian imbalance are asthma, coughing, epilepsy, laryngitis, lung problems, mouth sores, pneumonia, and genital disorders. The governing meridian. The governing meridian begins in the pelvic cavity, then drops down and emerges below the genital area. It passes to the tip of the coccyx from where it moves upwards across the sacrum and along the spine, up over the head, and down the center of the face, stopping at the center of the upper lip. In traditional Chinese medicine, the governing meridian is the regulator of the nervous system and, along with the central meridian, it allows excess energy to pass through it to other meridians that may be deficient in energy. The physical symptoms associated with governing meridian imbalance are headaches and pain in the eyes, stiffness in the spine, eye problems, hemorrhoids, insomnia, and spinal problems. Okay, so we've reached the end of Lecture 5A, and for Assignment 5A, I'd like for you in an essay of no less than 200 words, describe the meridian system. What are the 12 meridians and what are their partners? Briefly discuss the central and governing meridians. And of course, this assignment is due by 11.55 p.m. this coming Sunday. However, if you have any difficulty with this assignment, please shoot me an email or a text message. My office hours are on Thursdays from 4 to 6 p.m. And with that, I will see you in the next lecture.